Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with hard surface modeling. We're going to be continuing with our chainsaw model. We can see we've got a few more things that we need to do. So if we go back to our orthographic and go to front, if we unhide our image plane, select our mesh, we can sort of see that we've lost, if we press three now and smooth, we've lost this sort of flat tight edge. So what we're going to do is just going to fix this. I'm not sure how that's, but let's just hide this and have a look at it. So we can kind of see, if we look at this, it's kind of actually still curving down. We want this to be flat. So what I'm going to do, I always like to use objects as reference for lining up. Instead of like guessing, you can s snap them, but we're, we're so close to sort of doing this. It's, it's just how I do things. Like People have loads of different ways, but I know that this is flat. And somewhere down the line, we must have uh, adjusted this slightly. So you can either go short, keep your modeling toolkit open because that's going to be the most useful. I'm just selecting my vertices. I'm just going to pull these vertices down to the level with this cube because we use this cube for our scale reference of the handle. And what we can do is bring that down. Check this bottom bit because obviously we symmetrized it or duplicated it. So we'll just pull that up as well. If we just go to our object mode you can just pull this out of the way. If you press 3 now, we can sort of see, still see it's kind of not perfectly flat. If you can see, because we got this sort of nice smooth uh, loop going around here, but we're not telling anything at the moment. We're not telling the geometry that we want this to be flat. So when we smooth it, it's going to assume that this is still a curve all the way to that edge. So I'm just going to go to my multi-cut. I'm just going to add an edge loop here. And an edge loop here. So now if you press 3, we can now see that R. Go back to object mode. We can now see that it's flat. And we've got a nice flat edge. So if we now go back to our perspective, The one thing that I will do actually, we beveled this edge and I kind of want to remove this bevel because I want to, I probably did that a bit preemptively because I want to do all my smoothing at the end. So I'm just going to go to my tribute editor because the reason why I do that is because once I've done this, I also have to do, what's that? I've done the tip, then I have to duplicate it. Then I need to sort of make sure that I've got this at the right thickness. Yeah, I can. I can press R and just scale it. But if you start scaling things when it's been beveled, you can see that you're also scaling the bevel and flattening it out. Albeit this is not a huge problem, but um, we want to kind of avoid this by keeping our bevels nice and smooth. So. Before I scale anything, I want to remove these bevels. And we haven't deleted any of the history off it. So if we go to our tribute editor, we can now see all of our history. So we've just got our poly splits that we've just done. And we've got these poly bevels. So these are our last poly bevels we've just done. And this will all stay on our model. So we can see everything that we've done on this model by clicking these arrows. And this is our history. So we can go for it and we can turn things off, but the further back you get, it can go a little bit funky. Um, when you like, you can turn, like change things near the end, but it's, it's advised not really to. You want to try and keep it as uh, tidy as possible, but I want to remove these bevels for now. So I can either just remove them by going to here so I can go to my node behavior, node state, and it has no effect. 
So now I've turned that node off and I don't have a bevel on it now. So this is quite a nice little way of if you've if you've beveled everything and you've want to under it, you can just turn it off. So I'm just gonna go through because I kind of want to leave my beveling right at the end. Once I've once I'm happy with this, I'll do my beveling at the end. Because I don't want to scale my bevels or anything like that, because then it starts to go a bit funny. So I'm just going to go back to my orthographic front. I'm just going to turn my go to shading and turn default material on so I don't see that shininess. And I'm just going to check these edges with this cube. And I know it's sort of curved. If I turn my shaded wireframe shaded on. We can see we've got some sort of weird stuff going on here. So let's try and fix that as well. So I imagine it's curved, it's just not. It's a bit too much of a steep curve, because don't forget we changed the size of this because it was a bit too long for our sword. Or you can have the sword longer. It's perfectly fine. But I just want to take this. There's a quite a steep angle here, which I want to take out. And it's all these tiny little things that will sort of make your modeling look really good. So now if we press 3 turn our shaded off we look at it, it kind of looks it looks really good it looks nice and smooth nothing no weird lumps or bumps going on there but obviously we've removed the bevel so we're not going to worry about it too much until we've actually finished the model cool so before we go too far let's just rename this to a uh, chain sword underscore bar geo okay, let's just remove that underscore keep it all so now I've given it what name it is and I've called it geo so I, I can I can search for these things so if I go to my orthographic in front turn on my image plane again What I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust it. Let's scale this up so it fits nicely around the end because I know we've changed it a bit, but don't forget we've also changed the scale of it as well because we can sort of see how if we unhide our prop sword. We seem to have picked that is a very large we can do it as long as that um just thinking do we want to do it that long it's kind of, it is very long let's not worry about it. let's just um keep it to how it was let's hide our prop sword I'm just going to scale. I know we're changing the reference for it a little bit, but we're kind of manipulating it to um, the size that we want. And as long as we still continue following this angle, it should be fine. Because we still only have to do half. Cool. So... We're now done with that section. So now we need to do this tip. Or the, the, the tip sprocket. We only have to do this one for one side because this sprocket's only, uh, it's got an access plate on one side. So let's go back to our perspective. Um, in fact, what we can do, because 
you can just start fresh from another bit of geo. I like to reuse bits that I've got. So I'm actually going to control D and duplicate this. And I'm going to hide my previous one because we've already got this curve and this edge. So I don't really need to model this again. I can just reuse it. So what I've done, I've just duplicated this. I'm going to hold right click or I'm just going to go back to my modeling toolkit, select faces. I'm just going to delete all those faces. I'm just going to delete all the faces around. Select that, then deselect the long one and delete it. In fact, I'm going to delete all of those because we're going to mirror it again. And now you can almost sort of see where our model is. So because we've scaled this, it has sort of changed some of the dimensions of it. Maybe we can make this a little bit longer. We'll, we'll play around with the, the length once we've finished this whole bit. Cool. So now, if we go back to our perspective, we can see we've got this section and what we can do we can just go to our poly modeling and we'll just delete because this will still have oh no it won't have anything on it actually so what we'll do is go to our mesh display and reverse because don't forget we now want this to be the outside edge And I'm just going to go select my edge. I'm going to go to my panels and tear off a copy again so you can see the perspective view. And go to my orthographic front. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select all these edges. So I've selected all the edges on that sort of side, and I'm going to press Control E. In my orthographic, I'm just going to like we'll translate it just a small amount, and we can sort of see where we're going to be at. So if I select my vertices, or you can do your edges. In fact, if I just select the vertice here and press Hold V to snap that level with this one. So when I duplicate this or mirror this, it's going to be uh, perfectly matching. So now we've got this sort of shape here. You've kind of got the opposite of here. We've got the little, the male part that goes into the female part. So I'm just trying to think if we want to, let's add a do that afterwards actually. So let's let's do this section. So I'm gonna kind of leave this. I'm gonna press control E again on those edges. And the reason why is because I'm actually gonna join these uh, edges and vertices to make a sort of edge loop here, but I don't want to do it too close to this sort of edge because we're going to be sharpening this edge, and I want to I want to leave any sort of engons or um, nodes away from any sharpening edges. So do I want to do? So I'll do two. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to press Control E, but I'm not going to do it locally. I'm just going to press W. And I'm going to translate them out. I'm going to press R to scale. Press W, hold V, and snap to this vertice. So now I can select my vertices, use target world, 
I target one of those points. And now we've got this nice edge flow here. I'm going to do the same again. Press Control E. Select these two. Press Control E. Sorry. Hold V and snap it to this point. I'm going to select my vertices. And I can target world this, but I can also select both of them. Go to my edit mesh and merge or merge to center. For something like this, I'll just use merge to center. And this will just merge them together. So I'm actually going to do the same. Before I actually go any further, I want to actually sort this edge out. Because I want this to be a nice sharp edge. So first of all, I'm going to try and get a 45 degree angle. Select that edge and press Control E. I'm just going to roughly place it there. Then I'm going to select this edge and select the bevel. Let's have a look what we've got here. Ah, okay, yes, we forgot that. So I'm um, just going to select those edges, select this edge loop, and then delete it. Because then it's just easier to work on a flat plane, and I can extrude all of it out afterwards. So I'm going to select this edge, you got bevel, bring my fraction all the way down. I think it was 0 0.05 last time. Add two segments. Maybe even a little bit less. So we want a nice... Oh. Nice tight edge there. And you see we still need to add this edge loop here. So when we smooth it, this is flat. So if we bring back our height geo, if we smooth that, we can see at the moment it's it's sort of fitting. It's going to be pointy here because we don't we haven't duplicated it. But um, once we have that, it will it will smooth around. And we can see we've got some sort of if we select this, hold R. Three again, because you got some sort of lumpy bit here. We can worry about that once that's uh, once we've finished modeling that section. Cool. So we're just going to continue modeling this so I could just go around and control E and just go all the like just roughly go all the way around but like I say I'm probably not gonna get it perfect and it's gonna show different wobbles and stuff so I'm actually gonna create another cylinder and I'm gonna use these pre-made cylinders to give me the correct sort of radius of this chainsaw blade. If I go to my tribute editor, I think we did 12 last time. Um, let's scale this up. Yes. Uh, so I'm just going to turn my shading x-ray on so I can see underneath and get this sort of roughly correct so I can add loads if I want so but don't forget, we've got to be accountable for all these polys. Obviously, we're not going to worry about that. But we can see where 
we need to be. And I'm just going to add a subdivision cap. I'm actually going to add enough to sort of match what we have already just here. And don't worry, I'm just going to, I am going to delete them. So, so I'm just going to go to my modeling toolkit. Once you've got a happy, happy with the sort of roundness, it's going to go to my faces. And I'm going to delete all the lower half. Then I'm going to delete all these. I'm going to select this edge, hold control shift to select the edge loop, delete, and double click and delete. And do the same on the back side. Delete, double click and delete all that. So now we've got this perfectly, it's, it's just going to come out as a perfect a sort of round angle in that fits. So we don't have to sort of guess this. So I'm actually going to select these two and I'm going to go mesh combine so now these are one mesh and I'm gonna go to select here and delete the history so I don't have the history of the two objects and I'm just gonna go to my modeling toolkit select the edges and I'm gonna select both these edges and bridge and I know it's quite rough at the moment but we will uh, adjust it so I'm gonna select this edge first Ooh. Let's go to our perspective and see what we got. Okay. I should have checked this, I forgot to, sorry. So I'm just going to go to my face, select all these back faces and delete. Then I'm going to select these ones that I kind of pulled out, hold V, and snap it so it's aligned. If your faces sort of uh, go a bit crooked because you've not, it's easy to do sometimes you just get too focused on one window it's not a problem um, you can either snap them back or you can select all your faces hold R and just scale them in one direction so because mine's flat you won't see it but so so if I just <laughs> say for some reason like yeah I don't know say for some reason you're, you're modeled in here and then you go back to your perspective and you're like uh, what's happened this kind of looks all screwed up you can select your edges or your faces, oh, sorry, your vertices or your faces, select them all, press R, then just scale them in the one direction and that will flat everything, flatten everything out for you. So it's just a nice little trick if you've got any sort of wonky mesh when you're sort of supposed to be doing something nice and smooth. Cool, so we've done this side. So now we need to do this sort of edge loop here. So we're just going to do, there are lots of ways we can sort of do these uh, edges here because obviously we don't want to continue this. If we look back at our previous one, we can see how we sort of did this edge here. So we'll just do the same again. So if I turn my shading, what I think I'm shaded on. And what I will do is select these vertex and spread them out a bit. What I can do is if I just control E on that. Oh, sorry, let's. So just oh, double click on. Oh, sorry. If I just select these edges, and what we'll do, we'll just continue this edge loop by control E. Pull our thickness down, and then we can select this vertice and weld that there. So now we've got this edge loop. And if we 
select these three here if we press E again control E sorry and let's just extrude this out go back to our vertices obviously you can do all these extrusions afterwards if you want and then do your target world afterwards I kind of like to do it as I'm going along so I don't forget because even if you do this like loads of times it's, it's really easy to forget So I'm going to actually extrude this one out. And I'm going to match this one. And if you look, we've got one, two, three, four, five edges here. But we don't want to continue five edges going all the way down. So we will reduce this down. So if you've got one, two, we can uh, keep these as our central, central ones and we can create this into an edge loop. So I'm going to go to match my vertices. So you have to multi cut, uh, sorry, uh, target world. I'm going to target world these vertices. Then I'm going to target world this one to there. And you can see it's kind of got a bit messy here, so I need to make sure I tidy this up. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that these look nice and smooth. So I'm probably going to have to change my edge loop around here to sort of match. Now if I select these vertices, hold V, snap to here. I've now created this edge loop that goes around here, then follows around and get, ends up going off into the corner. So we're trying to make this as efficient as possible without making loads and loads of a, a poly, but making it as accurate as possible. So I can select all these edges and sort of smooth them off, uh, scale them so it's flat. So now if I look how many edges I've got, I've got one, two, three, four. So we would have had five if we didn't do that. So we need to sort of got one, two, three, four, five. So at the moment we've got one, sorry, that's four. One, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, four. So we've got these edges accounted for. So we could do four all the way down. Let's see how that looks. A lot of this is like seeing how it works. So one, two, three, four. So now we've got one, four edges on each side. I select my target world. I'm just going to target world that to there. And because we've got this sort of this point here. Oh, no, sorry, it will be here. We'll see how that looks. So I'm just control E again. And we'll just bring it to here. So we're not going to worry too much about that edge at the moment. We'll do that afterwards. I'm just going to scale this so this is flat. I'm just going to use my target world. Just gonna sort of smooth this out. Because we got this point here where we've got it's all sort of converging. So let's worry about the sort of edge flow of it after we've done this. So I'm gonna select this edge and you get a bridge. Then I'm just gonna select all the other edges. And bridge that as well. Ooh. So now we've bridged all these gaps. So now we've got some sort of kind of not so tidy topology here. So we'll just fix that. I actually, so if we press three, hopefully that's, So 
I'm just going to bring these up to match that and then bring it down so it's smooths it out. So it's pretty I'll try and keep this as tidy as possible. Sometimes you just can't avoid it. I would prefer an extra edge loop going around there, but I think that'd be fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to probably adjust this actually. Try and get this. This can be quite difficult to see. Let's add another edge loop there. Just scale that so it's nice and flat. And we want to try and make this look as nice as possible. So I'm going to hide my image plane and I'm going to turn my X-ray off. I'm just going to smooth both of these and just see how they look together. So we've obviously got some sort of size mismatch here, so Let's pull these up. Cool, so if I smooth that. What I am going to do, if I just go back to my perspective quickly, and I'm just going to make all this on. Um, if I delete that now, because I want to leave my edging tool last, and I want to see how tight these fit together, so. And I won't see that as it's one. So I'm just going to delete all that so it's all on a flat plane again. Then I'm going to delete history and center the object on that. Press V, snap it. So I'm just going to go to my front. And I'm going to press 3 and smooth both. I'm just going to see where I'm having problems. So I've got some overlap here. You can see how these are moving quite a lot, so we might need a, uh, if we add an edge loop there. And let's just bring this down. See how much that doesn't move as much now. I'm just going to do the same here. It's not a big deal to do that, it just means I just kind of like to... Make sure my my sort of it, it doesn't stretch as much. So I've got some sort of strange stuff going on here now. So, 
turn our default material off and our wireframe unshaded. Let's right click and add existing. And let's put that fong on there. So let's have a look in our perspective. And you should be able to see if there's any sort of You should be able to see if there's any sort of weird creases or anything. So it looks fine. So I'm just going to go to my orthographic. Oh. Let me go back to my shaded. Turn on my default so it's a bit easier to see. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... I just want to move this up actually. don't like how that's positioned very closely there. Cool. So I'm going to press insert, hold V, and snap it to there. And all I'm going to do is just control D to duplicate. I'm just going to minus it in the Y. And now we've duplicated it across. So now we've got both those sides. So I'm going to select them both. Press mesh and combine. So now if I delete the history, I can now select all my vertices in the middle. And I'm going to go to edit mesh merge change my distance threshold so that they all snap into place and then object mode plus three so now if we got a wireframe on shaded we can now see that it's working pretty well and if we press three on this one we can see that we've still got some things that we kind of need to fix so if we just hide that for now, I feel that this looks pretty good. We've got some nice hard shapes here and it looks quite clean. So if we hide that one. I've got a feeling we just need to tidy up some points around there so it's not so... So if we go to our modeling, if we press two, we so we've got these sort of smooth. So one is, I don't think I've actually said that. I've just been doing it. So if you press one, it's just normal. Two is smoothed with uh, the low poly wireframe, and three is the full smoothed. So what we need to do to make this sort of match, we will need to add an edge loop here as well. So if we add edge loop there, if we press R and scale that, and that's pretty much on top. So is this actually? Let's double check that this is actually in the center. Which we may not have centered it with this. Cool. So let's actually select these vertices. Bring this down a tiny bit. Select these bottom ones and bring it up. So we've got some wonky stuff here. So we still need to add an edge loop on this part. So double click and press R to scale. So now if we press three on both, they should both fit really nicely. And they do. Cool. So we're pretty much almost 
done with this side of it. So the other side will just be this whole section, but no join bit. Cool, so if we just go back to one. Perspective. And I'm going to select both of these. You'll delete all the history. You're going to copy this. So I've selected all the, the naming, copied it with Control C, and press Control V. And I'm just going to call this nose. Sprocket. Because I actually kind of want to keep. I'm on it. I know I extruded them early, and but at the moment I want to keep them all with flat planes for now because we're working with kind of a flat object. So, and we're going to end up duplicating this now. So, if I put that together, I just want to control D. And now I'm going to duplicate it across. And if I hide these ones. I can now, what I effectively want to do is join these together. I need to remove all this sort of stuff. So if I count how many edges I've got, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I should 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, 13, 14. But we're going to reduce these. So what I'll do is... I'm going to, first of all, delete this part. And select all that and delete that. And you select my vertices and just scale them in one direction because we probably won't need all these edge loops now we can probably delete them so I'm just going to go to this one now and I'm kind of just going to probably just delete all of that. So I'm going to bring my vertices because we can straighten this up. I'm just going to pull this to and now we can see where we can remove stuff. So I'm going to actually merge these together now. Let's mesh combine. So we've got this one in the middle which we can keep. So straight away you can probably see we can get rid of this edge loop. In fact, actually, it was this one we added in. So we can delete that. And we can adjust these afterwards. Can't add another edge loop to fix that, but it's fine. So if we select these vertices, I'm just going to scale them, hold V, and snap to that position. Then obviously we've got some extra vertices that we seem to need to account for here as well. But let's worry about. Getting the ones we have lined up, the ones we want to keep. So selecting all these ones. You can see here we've got sort of vertices we can't 
we we can't account for at the moment because we have nowhere to weld them to. But if we look down here, we don't really want to add more edge loops if we don't need to. So let's see where we can actually. We could probably. In fact, what I'll do, I'll, I'll go through a little trick that we sort of do if, if you end up in this point. So, what we can do, we can sort of make a, a node here. So, I'm actually going to. First of all, I'm just going to tidy all this up so it's not so gross. So, it's easier to work with. I'm just going to sort of roughly get this the same all the way around. And you know what? I'm actually going to select all this. I probably actually too early attached that. So I'm actually going to go to my edit mesh and extract it. So now I've removed that. Just going to freeze it. Because now I can, I probably shouldn't merge it. So I can just delete that bottom half. So I don't, because I'm going to have to do it here and I don't want to have to do it again. So if I delete this edge and and what we can do is one So if we, because effectively we want to end up with something like, so if we target weld that there, sometimes it's easier to sort of visualize the loop because sometimes it's going to be quite hard to see when it's like that. So now we can sort of see this edge loop goes around here. And obviously we've got some sort of problem here where we we can't add a point here because then we're going to end up with a uh, like a five-sided polygon. So if we pull this down and create this edge loop here, let's select these two edges, bridge it. And obviously we have this triangle here, which we don't want. So if we just hold shift and right click, we can fill that hole. But we can't leave that. So, what we can do is go to multi cut. We can create another edge here. So, now this has created another edge loop. But the problem is, we've now got a, a, a pole, which is a one, two, three, four, five. It's not a huge problem when you're on a, a flat surface. But um, you wouldn't want this on a sort of an animated sort of face because it's very difficult to work with. But for, say, hard surface modeling, it's probably not so much of a big deal. But if we can, let's see if we can make this so we don't have a pole. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm actually going to finish off tidying this edge. So a lot of hard surface modeling is at loads of problem solving because you get stuff like this all the time. And you can look all the way down and you can add another edge loop, but we don't want to add another edge loop to here because then this will sort of break the uh, sort of roundness of the hole. So how can we sort of fix this? So we can either put a pole there, and it's not a problem, you can put a pole there, it's fine. It's not going to make much difference at all to a flat surface, but like I say, a lot of the a lot of hard surface modeling is is problem solving. So we want to try and make this mesh as nice as possible. So I'm actually going to go back to 
cylinder. I'm gonna hold V. I'm just gonna scale this up. Because that one had more edges because we had to account for the sort of um, all the, the sort of inlets and the, the cutout parts. But on this side, we don't have to worry about that. So what I'm doing, I'm just matching this. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten edges. So we ideally want to end up with one, two going right to the end. Like we could just delete that if we wanted to. Um, but I really want to try and make this as nice as possible for us. Um, if I go to my tribute editor, so we've got the two edges that will go around there. Let's pull it off to the side. And let's see if we can. So we could probably actually fix this just by deleting those edges. Oh, not too much. And we want to make sure that we end up with three at the end. So I'm going to select these three. Press Control E. And last time we bridged this and we made it created another edge, so we're not going to do that. We're going to now go to our modeling toolkit, target world there. Ooh, make sure you got it deselected. And we're just going to continue this all the way now. I think I over sometimes. It's really easy to overcomplicate things, which I've clearly just done. So don't worry, everyone, everyone does it. So we actually want to kind of bring that round. Like I say, this is the first time me actually modeling this. It's not like I've, I've practiced this before, then this is just how, if I was given a task to do this at work, this is the exact same process that I'll be doing. And I wouldn't, the thing is like, you watch a lot of stuff and it kind of, you watch a lot of tutorials and it kind of looks like, oh, this person knows exactly what they're doing every time. Like they understand techniques, but there's the, there's the ways you've got to figure stuff out. Not everything's done like perfectly the first time. So it's just. Oh, I'm using the wrong tool. That's why it's not working. So don't expect to. Right. You, you could get it right first time every time and it's fine. And it's, but um, don't be worried. Don't, don't like worry if you make mistakes because like that's how, how you learn. So. And. Even people that have been doing this, like, God, I've been doing, I've been modeling for like, I can't even think, nine, nine years, I think. So, yeah, and you still make mistakes. Don't, 
I don't believe anyone that says that oh, they don't make any mistakes and they get it right. Because it's just a load of rubbish. So. I don't mind that these are not. Also, I don't. Like. We've built this as like nice and symmetrical as possible, but we we're probably gonna break the symmetry at some point, so it's not like because it's fairly obvious sometimes when it's modelled and it's you do need to break the symmetry sometimes to sort of make it look a little bit more natural. But I'm just. See how much simpler that was? I was just way overthinking things. It's really easy to do. Cool. We'll probably adjust that. So yeah, we've we've done that side, so yeah, it's control D. And I, I always do this. I I I don't know why I never use never use mirror and stuff like that, but it's, it's more, you're more than welcome to use it. I just find it easier to do it this way. I'm just going to select my vertices, edit mesh and merge. Then I imagine they're not properly on top of each other, so I'm just going to raise that threshold. Cool. So now if I press 3, you've got a nice smoothed chainsaw tip. So now I'm going to merge these together, combine, select all these edges, uh, sorry, vertices, and do the same again. Merge, I'm just going to change the distance threshold, and you can sort of see we've got some quite tight edges here, and if I smooth this now we're going to end up with a sort of a lump here. So I'm going to select this edge, control and delete, so it deletes the the vertices as well. Just gonna press three. And I'm gonna unhide the other parts. I'll just go to my perspective. Or oh, just go to my uh, front off graphics, sorry. I just want to check that these sort of do line up fairly well. So if I hide these two again and unhide my image plane. Oh, and our model was behind it. So I'm just going to look at this sort of shape, because we'll see it's slightly got a bump in it. So I'm actually going to add one more edge loop here. I'm going to hide this. I'm just going to look at it as well. Because like you can follow the, the reference. You want to follow the reference as close as possible. But at the end of the day, if it looks a little bit funny, it looks a little bit funny. So... Sometimes you have to do really small adjustments.
So it's pretty important that these both do actually match up as well. Because I think we removed some of those uh, vertices, so they're not going to be exactly the same. So what we'll do, we'll just make sure this all sort of... Let's worry about this curve first. So I actually prefer this this curve on this bit because there's less less geometry in there, so it's probably going to be a nicer curve. So I'm just going to go around and just make sure it's sort of very small adjustments. Cool. Then I obviously want to. Look at this one. So I'm just going to match this up because we've got a lot. The reason why I'm sort of because we've got less geo, and this the less geo means that it's going to be um, more rounded curves. It's going to be less sort of. I think there is a tiny kink here though, like the smallest kink. Just enough to sort of notice, and that's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to use this as a reference to match the other edges. So I'm just going to go around and select the vertices, make sure they sort of match up. Because I don't want it to be too far off. I just don't want it to be absolutely perfect because, well, I'm sure that they are probably pretty close to being absolutely perfectly matched. It's just mach like metalwork machines, so. But there's going to be some damage on it anyway. Eventually, we'll be, we'll probably sculpt some damage into it, and stuff like that, and very small sort of damage, nothing huge, but um, enough to sort of break it up. So I'm just go around and matching these vertices up. So it's not we're talking tiny amounts, but it makes all the difference. So now we've got those two sort of matched up. Let's turn off our X-ray. So we've got the back side and front side so I'm just going to press one on both of them and you can sort of tidy up this topology I think it's, it's fine for what it is if we just open up our reference we've definitely shortened it but we can see we've got these sort of rivets but those are going to be like um we're probably texture those we'll see what it's like to sort of model it in but um let's not worry too much about it and i think that was a hole but we haven't actually done that so let's not worry about it for now cool. so i'm just going to hide this And I was looking up sort of what the gauge of a chainsaw is, and you can and and the gauge is the sort of um, the gap between the two these two sort of sections here. So if I made a cube, and if I get to my tributes editor, and the gauge for I just picked one random one was 0 0.13, so um, 1.3 millimeter. 0 0.13, 0 0.13. So we've got a 0 0.13 cube here. I'm just going to scale it up. 
probably should have just done it in the width. But now I know that's 1.3 millimeters. So this is why I left my smoothing sort of to the end, so we can get the thickness correct. Correct. So if that's 1.3 millimeters wide, and that's what our sort of the sort of the tongue or the groove, the, the sort of bits on the chainsaw will be. So I'm going to delete, I'm going to select these to freeze, delete the history and center the pivot. Then I'm just going to sort of align this. So if that's the gap, these blades are quite, these are much thicker compared to the gap. So if I control E, so I reckon the blades probably, let's see if I can look it up. I can't actually find anything on the actual thickness of the metal, but looking at all the reference, It's quite, it's not hugely thick. It's probably like 0.25. If I get my measurement. It's probably three, 0 0.3 millimeter to be honest, 0 0.3. So if that's um, probably shit off. Sorry, I'm making loads of mistakes at the moment. Sorry. So that's it. So if I do my three. So that is three, three millimeters. So I'm actually, I'm actually looking at my. Caliper now. And I think that's probably about right for the thickness of the blade. And let's do the same for this control E. Thickness zero point. And now let's do the same for this. Six more faces. Control E and zero point three. And this is why I like, even though I'm using the sort of exact measurements of what I can find online. I kind of still want to make sure that like it still needs to look correct, right? So So just gonna have a look for some reference and just double check that. So sort of looking at our reference that we have, we can see this is why I kind of wanted to do this before I'd done any of the edges. I can see that this is actually quite so if we hide that, bring back our reference, this doesn't look correct. It looks like we're way too thick. So let's go to our strewed face. And change our thickness to 0 0.2.
Let's do that for all of them. Change our thickness. So I'm just in my Trubiate editor. I'm changing my thickness on it because it just doesn't look right. It's just let's just bring back our reference and have a look. So I think we're actually it's looking much more correct now. And if we just unhide our cube, obviously we need to change the thickness because we've scaled this. Hide that cube again. Let's have a look at it. I think that looks more correct to what we need from our reference. So I did just notice something weird on the back here. I think it just might be my viewport doing something funny. Just in case, let's go to my orthographic top. Check the knot. It's there. See, somewhere along the line, I've must have moved something, which is not good. So I'm just going to go through all these edges. Even like being super careful, also, sometimes just just gonna go through. Select all the edges. And just scale them so they're flat. Do the same to the other side. Actually, what I will do is not do it that sort of way. That is one way I can do it, but I probably should just delete these edges and extrude it again. As easy as as nice it would be just to sort of do that. It may mess things up, so I'm just gonna go through and do it properly. If I double click on that, delete that. Now if I select the in faces, press R, scale it so it's flat. So I should fix that. So if I press Control E, change to 0 0.2, go to my object mode, hide, and let's bring back that gap. So we're looking pretty good here. So we've done... We have done... Pretty much all of the chainsaw blade. We haven't done this sprocket. Um, we can do a basic one of that. We don't see loads of it, so we'll just keep that basic. And looking at this, when I was looking at the reference, this is actually, these are not two separate bits. This is one, they, they must machine it to be sort of ed, all like sort of edges around the edges and it's probably like sprockets in here. But this is actually not gaps in here. This is actually a solid piece. So we will also do this into, we'll, We'll um, bridge these over so it looks like it's one solid piece. Cool. So let's have a look. Let's just minimize this for now. And just looking over the entire thing, just double checking there's not anything that, like, 
I still want to do before I commit to this sort of because effectively like I could just leave that as that and no one would notice but we're trying to make this as, as, as best as we can so I will when we're 100% happy with this we will merge these two together the one thing that I'm just contemplating whether it is to add this uh, little hole because we have missed it out so I'm just gonna freeze my transforms I'm just gonna go to my orthographic front view I'm just gonna slide this down go to my shading x-ray because we didn't really scale it that much we just sort of Um, well, we did scale it down so it fits into our sword because this is obviously a massive chainsaw blade. Um, we want to make it work. We, if, it, if it's too if it's too big, it's going to look uh, silly. So we have got that hole there. Um, <clears throat> what can we do to? She doesn't notice this. I'm very hide that. I don't know what's three. Yeah, that's definitely something weird going on here. I don't know what's happened there. Must have. Accidentally. That's why you've always got to be like super careful with what you do. I, I feel like I've been pretty careful, but like I say, it's, it's it might have been saying that I fixed on one side, but I didn't fix it on the other. So what we're doing is just having a look. So if I just, I know I'm scaling it and changing it quite a lot at the moment, but I've I've um, froze my transform so we can go back to our original scale. So as long as we don't freeze it again, we can go back to the original. What I'm doing is going to scale this back up. I'm just going to make another cylinder and I don't really I could probably texture this in to be honest but um, I'm curious on just checking on what I would need to do to add it in so probably should have done that at the start to be honest so So we probably <clears throat> need to rebuild a fair chunk of this. So if I'm looking at it now, I can make this edge eventually go to here, this edge eventually going to here. One down here and one down there. This can probably follow along up to here. So what I'm going to do, I know I seem to be making a bit of a mess of this, but so I'm just going to select my uh, faces and just leave the faces. I'm just going to go back to my orthographic front and I'm going to go to my modeling toolkit and I'm just going to sort of model this out over the top so I definitely want an edge loop here 
Ooh. Let's undo that. Control E. It's an edge loop. Control E again. Have another edge loop. So, what I'm doing now, I'm just sort of planning over the top. So I can actually delete this. I seem to. So if this was to control E here, if I just select my vertices, and hold V and just select up in there. What I'm doing, I'm effectively just making what I'd call a patch. So I'm not actually adjusting the geometry yet, but I'm building something around over the top so I can plan it out so I can just drop it in. Because there's, because if you have to make edits like this in your sort of model, you don't want to go ahead straight away and just delete everything. It's better to make sort of patches than figure it out after that. Because then you can end up just causing more, more work for yourself. So this is quite a, a useful technique that I use quite often if I've messed up. So all I'm doing is matching the current topology that I have. And so control E straighten out. We can sort of see what we're adding in here. So the most important thing is that we keep it to the same as this or at least as close to. But we also need to marry this up to here as well, so. We've probably got quite a lot of edges there. That's my only problem that I'm seeing. Um. Maybe we could No. Let's leave that. Let's just work on this patch. So control E. Just gonna So shoot learning quite a lot of uh, sort of techniques in here. I'm actually going to keep that straight. So now if we look at this, we've created this patch and we've built it in a way that we don't have to affect any of this topology going forwards or going this way. All we have to do is control E again, pull this down and that's matching there. And let's just smooth this out. So all we have to do now is we would have to add edge loops up here, which is fine because this is on a hard edge, so it doesn't matter. Then we just have to replace this chunk of the geometry out, which should be fairly simple to do. So it's a lot easier to do fixes like this on a separate thing, like a patch, than figuring it out on this bit of geo. Because now, effectively, we can just go to our perspective, shading, x-ray, and let's snap this to there. Oh, let's 
center it so it is on there. So now we're right on top. Press F to center it. We can see how it's going to fit on. So we actually need to it's what's going to be easier. I know I've done this so many times now, but it's a it's a lot easier to do this. This is why you want to be a hundred percent sure you're happy with your model before doing smoothing and stuff like that, and any sort of like large extrusions, because. Now making this patch is a lot easier, so I don't because I've obviously I've got I've got more edges down here on this part. So if we go to my orthographic front, you can sort of spread these out so they're not so tight. So I don't want to cause any kinks. So we probably could have done this in the textures, but it's kind of nice to try and get as much in the modeling. I prefer to get do it that way. Because when you're doing like stuff, film and stuff, like you're gonna end up doing a lot of high detail modeling. So now all I can do is just go to my polygons, delete that section, go to multi-cut. Add these edges in. Select those vertices, hold R. And just sort of flatten them out. Gonna sort of keep these at a nice even distance. So probably could push this actually further down. And all I'm going to do is select my object and mesh, combine these together. It's going to, oh no, don't freeze the transforms because we need to keep the transforms so we can scale it back. I'm just going to delete the history. I'm just going to go around, oh, combine those again. In fact, let's throw them out at zero. Um, so let's remember that that's 0 point, uh, 0 point, 1.07 um, bigger because we're going to have to merge these. So if you remember it's 0, 1, 0 0.7 uh, bigger, we can then make it smaller by uh, minus 0 0.7 because when we mesh combine this it freezes the transforms so i'm just going to select the vertices and i'm just going to go to mesh so edit mesh merge the center i'm just going to select all these and press g to repeat command and i'll worry about the topology afterwards i just want to make sure that every single one is 100 percent stitched Cool, so now we've made this sort of oil hole. Possibly could be a bit too big, actually. Cool, so if we press three, we can see we've got something odd here. So it looks like we've actually thought we didn't actually stitch that one. So we'll just do it again. Merge the center, press three. Now that's stitched. So it's always good to just check between your smooth model and see if there's any sort of weird stuff going on. So let's try and even this out. Cool, so we've done, we added that oil hole in. It was, I was wondering about that. I'd, I didn't really want to miss it out because we had done so much to all the other bits and it seems a bit silly not to do it. So we can now go to 
Oh, scale and go. Nine point nine three. No, zero point nine three. Now we've scaled it down by zero point seven. And hopefully that should be exactly. Same. And it is. What was it? It was. It was actually nine, uh, 0 0.99, oh, 0 0.993, oh. no, okay. anyway. What's going on here? Snap it onto the face here. And let's just snap it to that point. Insert. I'm just going to change the pivot point to there. Seem to have made a mistake somewhere. Fitted. Let's hold V, snap that to that vertex seat. So now we've added in that sort of oil hole. It still seems very big. So we can just scale this down. Obviously, you can't really see in that image, so we're going to have to sort of do what looks good as well. Cool. So I'm just going to freeze the transforms, delete all the history of that, select my faces, control E, and extrude it by 0 0.2 for 2 millimeters. And I'm actually going to change my pivot point again. I'm just going to snap it to that point. Then I hold V and I'm going to snap it so it's aligned with that. So now we're pretty much done with that. So I will now want to just probably want to save it if you've gotten this far. And we will merge these together and bridge these gaps. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I am going to um, Yeah, let's merge it. Let's do it. Because I want to do this properly and this. So let's go to mesh combine. So now they're both. Let's hide this. We need that. So now we've combined those two. And now what we need to do, we need to sort of bridge this section so it looks like it's one piece. So we can go to our face. And bridging is really useful, but you've just got to be very, very careful how you use it. Because, say, if I did this bridge then did this again bridge yeah it looks fine but if we go to our vertex face we can now see that we've actually added in 
some geometry in this gap, which is, is quite bad. So if we now press three, we would see we'd get this weird hole, which we don't want. So if I undo that, so we can go to face, select this edge loop, because we've done everything quite nicely, so everything should edge loop, good. We do that edge loop, so bridge, and it will do this. Because it doesn't kind of know what it's gonna sort of edge loop to. So we actually need to do this first one. So edge loop, bridge. So now we actually need to delete these first. And if we, in fact, let's not do it that way. Let's delete that. So what we need to do, if we select these, this edge loop, delete that, select this edge loop and delete that. And what we can do is select in a bit and that one and if we bridge that now you can see that we've only bridged the edge so now if we double click on that select the edge deselect these ones and if we select bridge again equals oh yeah the invalid number So, what's that down there? probably one that we've not selected somewhere. So let's just bridge that somewhere. Bridge that there. I think it's not going to work because it's counting it all as one edge loop. If we bridge it again, yeah. So we might have to just do this manually. probably because there's not an equal uh, that's exactly why it's doing it because there's not an equal number on that side and also we've got some weird stuff again I don't know, I don't know if I keep missing stuff sorry so let's go to our x-ray And what I'm doing is just matching it up both sides. Cool. And it's not doing the edge loop because we've got extra ones here. Obviously, we did move that. So I forgot to add the changes that we actually created on the other side. So. Turn the X ray off. To be honest, I could probably actually let's delete that because it's not actually thinking about it, it's actually not that optimal because we're never ever going to see in there so we'll probably actually remove some of those polygons we we don't need that we only need these edges so if i i still need to add more in so if i go to a multi cut and add these into the edges select these edge and that edge bridge and that's bridged across but now I need to go to my panels orthographic front if I go to my shading and turn my x-ray I can see that I've got some really bad topology on the other side 
So if I just hold V and snap it in just the axis, not don't select the middle because you will end up snapping it on top. So only do it in the axis. We're just gonna line these up. I've made a little bit of a mess of this, but sometimes it's good to see because now you're seeing how I'm fixing it. So yes, yes, I'm not editing out any of my mistakes. If you know what I mean, you're seeing it how I'm sort of doing it as well. So. So now if we just go to there, and now we can see we've filled that edge in, and we've actually left the inside because we don't we don't need to do it because we're never going to see it, and we don't really actually want to texture too much of the inside anyway. So we're going to probably optimize this a little bit later as well because you don't want to be wasting you don't want to be wasting um. UV space on stuff or like on the inside like you're never going to see the polygons on the inside so we'll when we get to the point of UVing it we will optimize our models for uh, better UVs as well so we'll do that at the UV stage not at the modeling stage because it's just easier to figure it out then so I'm just going to do the same to these delete Go to my edges and bridge. So in reality, you don't actually need any polygons on the inside, so you could actually just control delete that if you wanted to keep the poly count down. Um, I'll put one, I'll put one division in it and delete the other side. So there's actually some geometry in there. Just going to do the same for these. Delete. And this, sorry, this has been probably a very, very long tutorial. But I just want to show you my full process. I don't want to sort of cheat you out of anything. And probably do the same for here. So we'll just get rid of those. I don't really like how that sat, so I'm just gonna multi-cut and I'll just get it in the center. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with the, the whole overall thickness. Obviously a chain. We still may end up sort of changing it. It's it's hard to tell until we sort of put the chain on. But um, we've now added that into. So if we turn that into no wireframe on shader, we've turned that into one chunk now. So that looks correct. And we've got the bar. And you can sort of see that we're never going to see inside. So when we do uh, UV this, we'll probably delete a lot of the inside. But that's that's for another time. We just want to get the our, our good model done first. So let's check over this, and this kind of doesn't look amazing, but it's fine for what we need it to be. So I'm gonna hide that and hide that. I'm just gonna assign my fong material. Ooh. And you can sort of see the sheen on it. And what we're looking for is, in fact, let's, Let's change the cosine on it so we can see it more. See so yeah, what that's doing there. It's it's changing. Oh, if you look on the sample, we can see what we're doing here. So we're making it more of a sort of focus point so we can see 
And when we do what we're doing here, we can sort of I use this a lot to check if there's any sort of weird kinks or bumps. But it's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's select all of this, freeze the transforms, delete all the history. And we should have chainsaw sword bar and the sprocket geometry. Let's have a look at the sprocket. See if we can sort of improve this in any way, because it doesn't look spectacular. I think it'll probably be all right. This seems far too straight. But let's not lose. We actually check that, so it's actually fine. So let's leave that as it is. I'm, I'm fine with that. So what I like to do. Um, I really want to smooth this. I want to do the subdivisions on the smooth stuff. So I'll hide that. So we can see it's smoothed. Um, so if we just select all the edges. Don't forget there's... A little bit on the sprocket. So let's check. And this is why it's good to always work with edge loops, because now we know everything's pretty much perfect. We don't have to select all these edges. And now we can go to our modeling, select our bevel. Now this is going to create the bevel on the edges. So obviously you want it. If we go to our object mode and press 3 now, this obviously needs to be fairly sharp, so it's going to be like sharp metal. That's looking pretty good. Let's unhide our nose sprocket and do the same. Let's press Control one and hide it. And you can see how, because we've got everything in edge loops, we can just double click and it selects everything. If we just bevel this again, change our segments to two. And because this is slightly smaller, our bevel may not be exactly the same. So let's see how, because We've got smaller holes on this one, and it's over a large thing, but we've got a kind of a relatively even sized uh, object here. We need to make sure that our bevels are sort of at least matching. So you don't have like soft edges on one thing and hard edges on another. Because the, the bevel values will change as per sort of object size. So now if we press three on that, we can now see we've got a really, Got sort of a gap here, so let's have a look at that. Ooh. So we've got this gap, which we probably want to get rid of. I think it's probably coming from this. So we don't really want to add another edge loop because that's where it starts to get a bit silly with adding extra geometry. So we'll just pull that and see how that looks. 
it's kind of not working. So. Let's see what happens if we do add an edge loop here. And when we add edge loops off, it's going to add it all the way down. So we need to make sure that it doesn't affect anything else. Which it probably will in a certain way, but we kind of want to. I think our main, the most important thing is to get this. So obviously we've got such a huge gap here, which is probably why it's causing uh, issues. We can just tidy up this topology a bit. So now we can see that's a lot better. There's probably going to be some sort of gap in there, but... But I think that looks fine. Cool, so... I think we're almost done with this. I know I keep saying that, but... If I unhide this and turn my x-ray on, you can see we've got these sort of um, rivets. And this is not such a big deal because we can probably texture this in, um, say if this was a nice clean blade. But um, our, our blade's not going to be clean, so we're probably going to see different things here. Um, it's going to look damaged and stuff. So let's just make a cylinder. Control E. Let's rotate this around. And we're going to make some really, really basic rivets. And I know it's, it's really difficult to see. First of all, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to duplicate this. Then I'm going to pull my original one off to the side because my original one will have the the. Um, in fact, let's do that first. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I've roughly placed this cylinder in the middle of these. So now I can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to change my subdivision axis down to six. I'm going to try and place this sort of so the vertices are in the middle. Then can control D. And then go back to my original one. And I'm just going to change up the subdivision setting like 12. Then I'm going to hold V. I'm going to snap it to the corner. And you can use like other tools like a... a Duplicate special, but for this, this, this for, for right now to explain sort of the simpler thing, I can. It's just easier for me to show you like this. So we've made this sort of. Let's say this is a rivet now, and what I want to do, I'm going to select all my faces. Then I'm going to select my edge. Press Control E. I'm just going to scale that in. And I'm going to go to my perspective actually. And I'm just going to turn my shading off. Uh, X ray, sorry. 
And I'm sure these rivets have some sort of flatness and some sort of... They'll, they won't look like perfectly flat, so let's try and do something a bit more creative with them. that out. Like, I'm only like such small sort of adjustments and, and we like when we do this we'll, we'll text straight over this it's, it's fine it's just so it's just a way of like doing things you can text to this or um, you can model it so I've just used I've just so, sorry so I've just selected that last edge and I've used shift right click and used fill hole and this will just fill the hole obviously this is really bad so you can't you can't leave stuff like that that looks just awful. I'm just going to pull this out a bit. So I think maybe... Okay, so we've done this. We've filled this hole. Because I don't want to leave triangles in there. So when you have a cylinder, they will go to a point. But we want to avoid that. So what I've done, I've just deleted them out. And I've just used the fill hole. Then all I'm going to use is the multi-cut. I'm going to select these edge, press enter. Select this edge, press enter. So now we've got this, but we've still got some weird stuff going on here. But if we now start to cut through to here, we now have quads. So I'm just selecting on the vertices. When the edge is highlighted, I'm just going to click on it. You can click on the end vertices and press enter. So now we've sort of made this cylinder with some nice topology in the middle and what I kind of like to do once I've done that I can sort of manually change that if I want but it's easier if I go to my sculpting tools if I hold B to and left click to bring my brush size down and I'm used the relax tool which is the sort of half a circle with the, the mesh then I'm just going to select only the sort of the inner edges and I'm just going to click around relax it and you can see how quick that was and that's made really nice topology cool so next thing to do I'm just going to select that edge and I'm going to go bevel cut some segments And I think that's probably good. So now what I can do is just select, because obviously I don't want it that deep. It's only a small sort of rivet. And we don't need to fill this hole in, because we're not going to see it. So I'm just going to go back to my, perspective, uh, my orthographic front. Turn my x-ray on so I can see through. So it's quite hard to sort of tell how big these are, but I, I sort of move it around to clearer ones so I'll probably imagine it's something like that right now you can control D make sure you just snap it in the axis otherwise you'll snap it to the to the center so control D control D I'm just going to duplicate this like I say when we come to UVing this, we'll probably delete these and UV it once, then reduplicate it. This is just for the modeling stage, so don't worry too much about that. So then we can actually delete that. And now let's control D again. Let's sort of bring them to the other ones. Because these are only like really subtle things. But stuff like this really does make a massive difference. So control D, select both and bring them down. It does get harder to see them. So we can actually, let's control D, let's, because uh, they're rivets, like if you don't know what a rivet is, it, it, it's basically like a, a piece of metal that's been, uh, like a cinder shape that's been put into a drilled hole 
then it should have been beaten with a hammer. So they probably will be all slightly different because this is sort of the overhang. So what we can do is just ever so slightly scale some of them. So they're not all the same. Just really tiny amount. Nothing too crazy, just enough to break it up. So we go to our perspective. Let's unhide our nose sprocket. Turn off our x ray. Let's select all of these and just control G and group it. Go back to our modeling, freeze the transforms, and delete history and center them. Then I can just push these in. You only need the smallest amount, but it adds a really nice. So if I press three, and we can sort of change this up a bit, we can add different depths and stuff. It needs to be a tiny incline. Some of them are slightly pushed out where I scaled them. But... Cool. So if we actually... I'm actually going to merge these all together. And combine. So I'm just going to select all these edges. Just gonna tuck them in so we don't see them. Cool. So that's we're pretty much almost done. Our next thing to do is just to probably just do this. Let's do all the history on that. Let's copy that name and rivet geo. Go to our orthographic front. And so we're pretty much done. So the next thing we just need to do is make this sprocket. So I'm just going to quickly. Where is it? If I. Hidden everything. So I'm just going to tidy it all up a bit. So we've got that now. So I'll hide our, let's hide our sprocket and our rivets. So now we just got to make the sprocket. So if I just go to my uh, reference and have a look at what could be in there. So this is what they look like. Obviously, we don't need any of this stuff. Um, the only reason that I'm doing the sprocket is just because it's probably helped for rigging and uh, the chain rigging and stuff. But you never know, you might, you might see it like at the tiniest bit, but you don't know. So we're gonna sort of model this. So if we can actually go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think those are probably about right. So. I'm probably going to bring this in to and layer over my image plane. So I'm going to pull that side and I'm just going to view image plane and import image. And I'm just going to go to my reference images. What was that? That was harvester sprocket. Open. Now I have it here. So I'm just going to scale this up. I go to my tribute editor. I could just raise my alpha gain or lower it, sorry. So I've just gone to my tribute editor on my image plane and change the alpha gain just so I can see through it. And I'm just going to sort of guesstimate where this could be. Well, 
in theory those rivets go so if we look at this this sprocket we can see that we what looks like bearings here and this is where our rivets would go and it looks like it kind of rolls around this I've never really looked at the sprockets before but it's an interesting bearing but so I'm just going to scale this up roughly the right size I'm not going to bother rotating it because it's actually it's going to help us it looks like this is already aligned So I'm just going to lock this off. Select all the translates and rotates and lock it. Oh, so as usual, I'm just going to start with a, a cylinder. Just going to rotate it around 90 degrees. Going to pull this along. I'm just going to scale this up. Just because it's in my X-ray mode. Obviously, this is probably not 100% top down, so there's a chance it could just be uh, not aligned. So, there, there are loads of ways we can do this. We can model one, uh, model one sort of sprocket uh, at tooth, then duplicate rotate around or we can sort of go to our attribute editor change our so what we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven cool so that was a good guess so we could actually rotate this round And we could select all these edges and extrude them out because we're we're, we're clearly not top down. Otherwise, this would probably fit. Like if that fit in there, that would probably all fit quite nice. Well, it does pretty. It's pretty close, but um, it's not perfect. But you could double it, so now you have the bits in the middle. So. I'm going to keep it as this because I don't want loads because I'm still going to have to make this sort of work in the middle. So I am going to select all my faces. Then oh, actually go to my perspective. And I'm just going to scale this whole thing so it's not so... So I've quite actually got my perspective here of nice. So cool. So I'm actually just going to focus on one. Then I'm going to duplicate it around. So I'm going to select this. So I've now only got that top bit. I've press Control E. Um, yeah, because I can't, so if I, if I did select all of these, I could actually do it like this, so if I press Control E, so if I choose my thickness, obviously that's not what I want because it's kept all the edges together, but I can turn edges off and And the problem is when I get stuff like this is that I can I can change the thickness of it, but what I can't do really is change the scale. I can change the offset, but that's not what I want. I want to be able to um, effectively 
uh, scale it width wise as well but I can't do that currently as what we've got so if I select that edge I'm actually just going to scale it so I'm just going to scale it again get that roughly there because ideally you would actually want to have to do this properly you would want an edge loop going all the way around so I'm actually for something like this it's going to look like I'm doing it the hard way but I want to do it as correct as I can for you so in fact, actually, it's, it should be fine. So we could just go Control E, bring that up. Where's it? Scale is on object, so we can change it to component. So now it's only going to scale in the component axis. And I'm only going to pick one side. I'm not going to try and match both sides. I only want to match one side because then you start throwing off the symmetry of it. So I'm just going to scale it here. So you get to a point where it's kind of like, ah. Uh, do I just sort of leave it like that? This is probably fine, to be honest, because when this is not a uh, going to be a super focused part of it. So if we go to so one thing as well, we've got to remember that that gap was let's hide that unhide that sorry was it 1.5 I think so obviously our sprocket has to be it's probably not it's probably something with enough gap not perfectly on it but we can worry about that afterwards cool so we've got one sprocket And it's, it's fairly basic. We don't have to have it like super detailed. We don't really see it that much. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to... I'm going to duplicate it and hide it just in case it all goes wrong. Now, what I want to do is... Because this is kind of... A solid chunk... I imagine it probably sort of bends in a tiny bit, maybe. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to my Deform tab, go to Lattice, and add a Lattice to it. So now if I go to my Lattice shape, I don't need five in that direction. What I want to do is why is it so if I freeze the transforms and go for lattice. There we are. Now that's 
I don't know why that wasn't square on there, but... So we remove that five. Oh, no, we actually do want that. So if I go to my shading wireframe, I only want to sort of do the tip, so I'm just going to add some lattices so it gets up to this point. I'm just going to hold, right click and select lattice point. I'm just going to select the top two. I'm going to also double click on my tools. I'm going to reset the tool. So I need to be an object to do this. And now you can see I'm scaling it with a deformer. So it's doing it across all the edges instead of doing all the edges manually. So it's just a nice way to sort of do an overall sort of curve on something. And maybe a really small bit there. But other than that, I don't need to do loads. So now I'm just going to select this. Let's go and delete my type history. So I just want to see what this looks like when I smooth it. This should be fine for what we need. So now I'm just going to before I do that, I'm, I'm going to press insert and change my pivot point back to the center. Just hold V, snap it. Where's that go? So I'm just going to select all my faces. Let's select these faces, sorry and delete. So it's minus 32.7. Cool, and that's much better. I was, I miscounted the sprockets. Anyway. So let's mesh. Combine. Let's select all these. Oh, select this one and mesh combine as well. If we go to all the vertices, in fact, let's go to our perspective just so we don't accidentally merge things we don't want so i'm just going to select all these and they should be the closest points anyway so i'm just going to go to merge I'm just going to change the threshold so hopefully 011 should have done it if i press three now and it should all look nice and uh, So the one thing that we'll do now, we'll just leave that and go So what I wanted to do was actually add a In fact, it should be fine, no, we're doing more than enough now So if we just control E Bring that in And let's do the same for this one. Control E. And we don't need to worry about the center of this. We can we can leave this. In fact, I will do that. What I was gonna do, so I don't like the fact that this sort of goes into a point here, so I'm just gonna select all these edges. What I'm just going to add an extra division in there. So 
So I'm just going to deselect because I only want these edges here. Let's go back to my orthographic actually. Do this. Deselecting them all. And should only have those selected. So now if I go modern toolkit bevel. I can bring this down. And what I want to do is I want to bring an extra sort of oh, not that window. Let's just go back to perspective. Add an extra edge in there so it's not so it's not going to a point. So when you do actually smooth this, it does actually look nicer. Now what we need to do is just go around and select all these edges. We can um, so there's there's a way there are other ways we can we can either bevel this, which is one way we can do it, or Another way, it's sort of, I guess, what you call, I'm not sure, I think it's got a proper name for it, I think it's called fencing, where instead of beveling, you actually just add an ed edge loop in, which is really quite useful. And if we wanted to sort of make it a bit more softer, we can double, because now we can select this edge loop, and you notice in the picture it sort of goes to a soft point, not this sharp. If we hold shift and right click, we can use a transform component. And this will just push everything out on its axis. And it'll push everything out nicely. Now if we press three, it's still sort of soft, so then we can bevel it. We can push that bevel more to the edges. So now if you press three, you've got your sprocket. So now what we can do, we can push this in. We can hide this, we don't need that. Let's go back to our original front. And let's just have a look, see how far that's actually poking out. And it's actually pretty close. And uh, it's not directly in the center of this, but it's pretty, it's close enough. So let's actually call this uh, Sprocket Geo. And I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna tidy up my scene. So that's my scale reference. So I'm just gonna call that so ref and just hide that. I'm gonna stick this up here. And I'm gonna delete all the stuff that I don't really need. So let's delete that because I tend to collect stuff in my scenes. So what we want to do, we want to keep it as nice and tidy, otherwise you'll end up with so much stuff. And we can hide that. And I think we may of have... deleted the shape for that, but it doesn't matter so much. So we can push this in here. So now we've got our chainsaws bar. Let's hide that. And let's group this. Control G. GRP. Let's delete that. Cool. 
so we're pretty much done now. So our next step would be to move on to our other part. Um, I'm unsure which part that would be. It would probably be, be what we would figure out next is how to mount. Actually, we need to do the other one. So whether if we do the same one twice or make a different variant, we well, I'll have a think. So we might have we may modify this one to a different one, but let's um. But yeah, we're pretty much finished with this. And we'll move on to the next part of the model. So if you've enjoyed this long hard surface modeling tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.